In the previous lesson, we uh, examined in detail the omitted variable bias, that if we do not include in the model some variable that should be there, so for the sake of completeness, uh, completeness in this uh, lesson, I will consider then the opposite case of uh, redundant variables, specifically what happens if we do include some variables in the model that uh, do not have actually any impact on the dependent variable y. So again, I will, I will uh, focus on the simplest thinkable cases uh, that uh, now let us assume that the true model is just a single regression model where y depends on x2. However, in our empirical modeling, we are not sure that uh, whether there should be also additional variable x3. So to be on the safe side, we decide to, to also include uh, x3 in our model, even though in fact it turns out that in reality, uh, x3 has no impact on y, but, but since we don't know it, we, we, we decide to include it in the model. So then the question is that um, what kind of problems would uh, including this kind of uh, unnecessary x3 variable cause to the estimation? So my assumption here is that uh, we are still interested mainly in the uh, estimating the, the slope coefficient beta to the marginal effect of uh, variable x2. And this x3 is such kind of uh, sort of, sorry, x, x3 is, uh, is a nuisance parameter that, uh, that uh, we, we also then include in the model. So uh, the reason why I want to want to keep this uh, uh, discussion at very simple cases of single regression and multiple regression with two variables is because uh, in the multiple regression case, the uh, closed form solution to the old estimator gets much more complicated. But it's still manageable in the case of the two explanatory variables. So here is the formula that I have uh, indicated to you already earlier. So this is how we calculate the OLS estimate if um, if we have um, two explanatory variables x2 and x3 so i don't discuss this uh, this formula uh, in more detail but uh, but i just note that uh, this um, uh, formula also depends on the sample covariance of uh, x3 and and y variable and now we can insert then in place of y this uh, formula where actually the beta 3 coefficient is equal to zero as as we as we know it. So the sample covariance of x3 and y uh, simply boils down to uh, beta 2 times sample covariance of x2 and x3. So uh, the only reason why y is correlated with, uh, with x3 is through this uh, covariance of x2 and x3 that is then, then uh, uh, influences this sample covariance between x3 and y. Okay, so then inserting that result to the to the equation, then and taking the expectation, uh, I don't go through the all of the steps um, in detail, but uh, but uh, but you can do that as a as an additional homework. So uh, so uh, it's easy to verify that the expected value of b two in this case is actually beta three. So uh, even though we included this uh, this uh, unnecessary redundant x3 variable to regression equation uh, the expected value of b2 coefficient is still beta th beta 2 so there is no bias for the for the for the for this uh, explanatory variable x2 that is that is correctly in the model and similarly it can be also shown that the expected value of b3 coefficient is equal to beta three, and that's also equal to zero. In other words, there is no no uh, no bias if we include an additional explanatory variable. Then OLS estimator is still uh, finding unbiased estimator for this uh, redundant parameter, and and beta three was equal to zero. So so the expected value of the OLS coefficient is also equal to zero. So in this case, when we add some unnecessary variable there is no bias to the to the variables that are correctly included in the model and also for this unnecessary parameter now what about efficiency then so here is the the main main loss than than if we do include some unnecessary variables so for the for the single regression case 
uh, we have the the variance of the of the OLS estimate, uh, uh, and we have developed this uh, this formula before that it depends on the variance of the error term epsilon. It depends on the sample size n and depends on the variance of the of this um, regressor x2. In the multiple regression case, the, the same variance also depends on the correlation coefficient r uh, between these regressors x2 and x3. So notice that this variance uh, formula includes this additional component of 1 minus r, r to power 2. So this is because, because there's uh, always some correlation, even by accident, between this x2 and x3, then uh, this uh, correlation coefficient r is always uh, um, always somewhat different from zero. So therefore, this, uh, this 1 minus r to power 2 will be slightly less than 1, and that will increase the, the variance of, the, of this uh, estimated slope coefficient. So compared to the correctly specified model, this uh, including the redundant variable in, adds to the to the to the variance of the of the estimator so in that sense uh, the uh, in, in including a redundant variable makes the OLS estimator less efficient so there is no no sense to uh, just just put some uh, arbitrary variables that uh, that uh, that have uh, absolutely nothing to do with the with the with the regression model Um, and then this also also this formula highlights that uh, that um, this uh, loss of efficiency it just critically depends on the on the correlation between x two and x three. If there's no correlation whatsoever, then then uh, then this uh, loss of uh, efficiency is relatively small. Also, it uh, it uh, depends on the sample size and and variance of x two. So so like I have always emphasized, it's a good idea to have as large sample size as possible. If you if you have a have a possibility to to influence it by model specification, for example, and it's also a good idea to have as large variance in your explanatory variable as possible. So the main take home lessons for about the about the redundant variables is that uh, that uh, the OLS estimator still remains unbiased and consistent, and it is also asymptotically efficient. Uh, even if you include some variables that actually are not uh, not needed. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using the standard errors and statistical inferences, so you can still rely on the t-tests and f-tests and, uh, and everything. And very likely for those uh, redundant variables, the, the estimated coefficients will be close to zero. So, so most likely they will not influence the model, uh, model very much. Main, main issue is that if you have relatively small sample size, then, uh, then your OLS estimator can be, can be inefficient. And uh, that's, of course, like, like the, the downside that you, you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't just uh, uh, put any, any kind of uh, variables uh, which you know already from the outset that they, they are not, uh, not going to be uh, relevant to your econometric model, then, then, then don't include just arbitrarily anything. But if you are not sure if there is, uh, if the if the variable might be relevant or not, then to be on the safe side, it may be better idea to include in the model because the omitted variable bias is much more serious problem than anything that the redundant variables could do. So let me illustrate it with a with a simple simulation example. So I start with this uh, this uh, hedonic model of housing market that we have considered also also previously, and now what I want to do is that uh, what happens if I include in this model just some some uh, arbitrarily generated random variable? So I'll just uh, just uh, generate some random variable myself and include it as a as a additional explanatory variable. So. This is how it affects the, affects the results. I have uh, just drawn from the uniform distribution between 0 and 1. So it's on the bottom row. And, and here I have the same, same model and same coefficients. Firstly, without redundant variable. So this is the same, same results exactly what I showed on the previous slides. And then the rightmost columns, 
I then have the have the same results, but but now I include this kind of uh, completely redundant uh, variable. This is just random noise that I generated myself in Excel. Okay, so I include this uh, this uh, random variable as a, as an as an explanatory variable. I know perfectly well that uh, that it cannot cannot influence the housing market in Espo because because well I I just generated these random numbers. Uh, well, afterwards, this uh, this uh, this uh, apartments were sold. So this has absolutely nothing to do with these apartments. Okay, so then it is interesting to see what what happens to this uh, these coefficients. So obviously there is some some changes in this uh, these coefficients of the regression model. So for example, if you look at the uh, size in square meters, which has been the uh, uh, variable of our primary interest. So, so uh, previously, it, the coefficient was four thousand one hundred thirty-seven. It slightly decreases to four thousand one hundred and thirty-six. Uh, one variable where there's uh, there is perhaps a uh, uh, more notable difference is the, for example, this uh, dummy variable. So, for example, the impact of uh, district dummy for Olari, it used to be minus seven hundred fourteen. It decreases to minus six hundred forty nine, but that variable was not significant in the in the first place also. And finally, what about this this uh, this random variable? So there is some kind of uh, um, accidental correlation with uh, with this random variable that I I uh, generated and the housing prices. So it seems that this this random variable has a slope coefficient equal to minus 2250 uh, but if you look at the t statistic it's very very small standard error is is uh, is uh, very high and the p value is 0 0.766 so it turns out that this uh, this uh, random variable is uh, not statistically significant and the impact in terms of the the housing prices is is uh, is relatively small so so uh, minus 2,000 euros is not really large impact uh, if you think about uh, housing prices of uh, on average somewhere close to 400,000. So this confirms my my uh, this confirms empirically the the lessons that I wanted to indicate that okay if you happen to accidentally include some variable that uh, should not be in the regression equation. So okay, it has some impact on the on the other variables as well. So let's not be naive. Of course, this uh, this uh, this uh, slope coefficients of uh, of other variables change to some extent, but not very dramatically. So the qualitative conclusions uh, of uh, of the hedonic model still still remains, and uh, we also find that this uh, this uh, arbitrary random variable. Is not really statistically significant that its own impact is is relatively small, so we wouldn't put some some uh, great impact on 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 that uh, on that variable. So this is trying to simulate this kind of situation that you to be on the safe side, you include a variable that you are not completely sure of should it be in the model or not. In this particular case, I know perfectly well that this this uh, this arbitrary random variable shouldn't be in the regression model. I just wanted to to simulate that how much it would disturb the, the regression model. And uh, conclusion here is that not that dramatically. So it, it's anyway, these coefficients are relatively robust to this kind of uh, redundant variable intro introduced in the model. So this is why I want to want to draw you the, the following kind of uh, implications on the modeling strategy that I started already in the previous video lesson. So uh, clearly the omitted variable bias is much more serious problem than, than what, uh, what including some irrelevant uh, redundant variables would be. So um, I would, I would uh, argue that, uh, that it's, it's important to specify the model carefully to start with and, uh, and uh, try to include from the beginning, all the necessary variables that that should be there, based on theory or prior experience or just just common sense, that what kind of variables uh, uh, would influence uh, the dependent variable in 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 your econometric exercise. That uh, and uh, 
even if then some of those explanatory variables uh, turn out to be as insignificant, then I would advise not to delete them automatically. So even if some explanatory variable seems insignificant, it might be correlated with something that is actually significant. So, so it can be risky to delete some, some uh, uh, insignificant uh, looking variables uh, uh, because as, as we see also then the, it might influence the coefficients of other variables that are actually significant and important for the model. So I, I would, not, uh, would not recommend to use this kind of stepwise, uh, stepwise model specification, whether it is, uh, it is kind of forwards or backwards uh, uh, iterating, but rather, ra rather think carefully the model specification to start with and try to aim, aim directly to the, to the model that you, that you need. Of course, that's, in practice, that's more easier said than done, that, uh, that, uh, that of course, uh, uh, it's it's uh, good to be honest and recognize that uh, that uh, of course the uh, econometric modeling can be a learning experience. When you also when you when you model the data, you also also learn something from the data, and then it might be might become apparent that uh, you would need some additional variables also, or you might need some kind of uh, model some nonlinearities or some in introduce some additional dummy variables or whatever. So. Uh, in my mind, it's it's fine to then then also uh, extend your model to add add more explanatory variables or or apply more general specification. That that's of course uh, very useful if uh, if the empirical modeling uh, facilitates learning and you and you and you can then end up with a with a better model. But uh, but uh, main problem is that okay if if you if you are uh, too much rely on the on the significance the significance test uh, or, or specification tests uh, uh, in this kind of stepwise model building, then this uh, significance test might be biased if you have omitted variables. Okay, so so uh, this would be more kind of uh, more holistic learning that, that that I recommend, not just kind of a specification test. And finally, also a practical advice that also also. Try to be open-minded to unexpected results. So, so for example, if you expect some some uh, some uh, some result, or for example, you would expect that uh, size in square meters has a, has a positive effect, but uh, if it turns out that it, it has a negative effect, then then uh, uh, don't try to hide it or don't don't try to uh, somehow hide it under carpet. But uh, but then try to think more carefully what could be causing this kind of unexpected result and. Uh, and uh, dig a little bit deeper, perhaps uh, then then uh, try some alternative model specification. Perhaps there's some uh, some nonlinearities that you did not take into account, or or perhaps there's some kind of uh, correlation with some other variables, or maybe there is some omitted variable that is 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 uh, driving that kind of unexpected results. So so rather than uh, give up, then then of course uh, this this would kind of unexpected results would motivate to then then. Uh, consider some alternative model specifications but the, but this is kind of um, what i mean by this holistic learning that is not like a, like a, such kind of stepwise uh, automatic automated procedure where you where you uh, test significance and then include or exclude variables based on that okay so um, i will still uh, clarify this uh, modeling strategy issue by introducing one more a concept called pretest bias. But I will do that in the next video lesson. Thanks for your attention and bye bye.